Welcome to the RF Elements Unlicensed Podcast. I'm Caleb. We're here with Tassos, as always. Hey. And this week, we are talking to ourselves. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. It's just you and I. And nobody else. <laughs> Not creepy at all. So. No, no. Since the beginning of the year, we've been working with the podcast and working with some guests, right? And we think it's been really working out well. Like, we had a few uh, last year, you know, that we went through. But this year, we're like, you know what? The 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 most that we can do, I think, to, to help people learn more about the industry and what everyone's doing is by interviewing other people that are not us. So, we've worked with WIFs. We've worked with fiber providers. We've worked with uh, equipment manufacturers, the service providers, so like software services and stuff like that. And uh, I think it's been going really well. We've been getting a lot of really good feedback, uh, really interesting conversations and these longer format conversations we've been having and really giving people an opportunity to, to learn more about you know the nitty gritty details behind a lot of different things in the industry. So I've had a really good time with it. Uh, Tassos, I know you have too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's been fantastic. Like I said, we're we're pretty tied into the whole you know Wisp ecosystem as far as you know distributors, uh, other Wisp manufacturers, and so we we have a lot of information to share. But it's it's of course it's there's nothing better than getting it from the source, right? And uh, having these Wisps online tell their stories and kind of help other Wisps grow with them has just been fantastic. And I look forward to more of these uh, podcasts with other exciting guests that are doing other exciting things in these very exciting times that we're living in right now. Yeah, never a dull moment, especially anymore now. We'll get to that here shortly. <laughs> but, you know, we know it's also summertime. Uh, everyone gets super slammed uh, during summertime. Just so many things going on. Networks being built. Uh, equipment manufacturers are hustling and stuff like that. So we're going to definitely keep continuing with these interview formats as it's working really well. But, you know, a lot of us really going to depend on availability. You know, just being able to, to get someone pegged down and schedule things in advance. And, you know, then there's vacations and stuff. And uh, you've got your, your big trip coming up so ooh, ooh, I gotta work my tan you see my base tan i got a base tan going <laughs> you better get some cover for that top brother so uh <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> that's the first thing to get burnt you know so uh, it's like a it's like a, a warning thing you're like oh oh getting a little hot up here i guess i'll start laying down the sunscreen so yeah yep. yeah i've got some trips planned so and it's important to get away every now and then so you know you just got to get away reset a little bit so that's good stuff but um yeah there'll definitely be more throughout the summer and everything and you guys stay tuned to to see what sort of cool stuff we've got going on if, if you're interested in talking to us on the podcast please reach out um email addresses we'll show later caleb at rfelements.com toss us at rf elements dot com um you know we're looking for for more folks to talk to so we've got a pretty healthy list but hey we're we're here to to learn ourselves so well cool cool so that being said you know it is very interesting times never a dull moment i think uh i mean what do you think tasas this whole ntia ntia bead nofo uh from the iija uh, <laughs> seems to be the most popular uh, topic of conversation going yeah. on right now yeah, so yeah. i thought we'd hit that up talk a little bit about uh government uh help in some areas or overreach <laughs> or a lot. We're not going to go real heavy into the weeds here. There's a lot of people out there have very strong opinions about this sort of thing, but uh, you know, it's been a really popular topic of conversation and I thought we would just kind of chat about it and give some of our insight and stuff too. So let's get through the, the, the giant pile of acronyms here. So as part of the jobs act that uh, was recently passed, the IIJA, the infrastructure investment and jobs act, there are some digital equity and broadband grant announcements from the NTIA or the National Telecommunications Information Administration. Okay, because we got a big old administration that's going to handle all this. Now, yeah. they have recently put out guidance and funding for BEAD, BEAD being the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment Program, because uh, you know they had to make it spell a word. Uh, and they, just a few weeks ago, it is officially launched with the announcement of the NOFO or Notice of Funding Opportunity. So yeah. I'm going to close this window now with all my lists here and because <laughs> I can't rely on memory. I'm totally so. glad that you handled that part of it because that's just a tongue twister <laughs> for me and just forget about it. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I'm like, yeah, better let me find the page that explains all this. But 
Long story short, uh, the government in its infinite wisdom has decided they're going to drop about $43 billion, at least in this first phase of this project. So part of the Infrastructure Act and like a lot of things the government does with these projects is the intentions might be well-founded, uh, but as always, it's the implementation. So the the there's a lot of information out there. Wisp has been doing a lot of information, putting out some webinars and stuff. But the the elevator pitch of this is about forty three billion dollars at play, and it is to be spent on building broadband to unserved and underserved areas across the country, Correct. all fifty states, uh, and a handful of various um, regions um, and stuff. Uh, islands and stuff like that so that are not officially state so the the crux of it or i guess where a lot of the conversations really come up though is how the money can be spent how these areas are defined uh and what qualifies for service because i think that's really what surprised people when it came definitely up. so it was there there's a couple of, of of catch points so there's unserved which means there is no available service and they're tracking this to the address level, which is new as well. Right. Yeah. So, really high resolution this time, not at the County level. Yeah. Not counties, not weird uh, zip code zones, weird polygons and stuff. Uh, the mapping services, uh, they'll be implemented later this year, tracking down to the individual address, which is new and very interesting. But so an unserved address would be uh, an area that does not have access to 25 by three service, right? Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Any, anything below that is considered unserved. Right. So unserved, and then there's underserved, which are areas that are below, maybe above 25.3, but below 100 by 20. Okay. Correct. So in the wireless world, it's good that they introduce these levels that are asynchronous. You know, when the beginning, it was all um, uh, same upload, same download, right? Typically intended for fiber. But, you know, there was a lot of work to allow for wireless in here and the asymmetric speeds that most wireless systems offer. So this is where this 25.3 or this 100 by 20 comes from, which is great. Um, the real sticky point came up though in this conversation <laughs> when they're like, oh, by the way, uh, we didn't really talk about this in the beginning, but now, uh, anything served with unlicensed spectrum, uh, is considered unreliable, uh, and does not count for served areas. Right. Ooh, and that's where are. the, the record scratch came out in this conversation. <laughs> so the info got posted on like Friday, it was April or uh, Friday the 13th, uh, in yeah. May, apparently, Everyone's like, "Oh, cool! The details are out. Oh, 90 pages bought. What? What? So, yeah. So this is where we are, and the industry as a whole is kind of scrambling to figure out. Okay, well, what constitutes, you know, unlicensed? And it's coming out that obviously five gig unlicensed uh, looks like all the six gig stuff that's being deployed whenever that's ready. You know, next year, <laughs> next year plus plus in. You know, that kind of deal. But uh, also, but CBRS, uh, if you're in GAA, that's not considered a license. Now, CBRS pals is, uh, and that, I'm not a lawyer. This is just the common understanding that we've got of it, right? Yeah. So now you're looking at all these areas, even overbuilt areas from different government funding projects that are deploying. But we would consider very reliable service, fast speeds, good service, you know, these really well built WISP out there, networks that people are really happy with. And then with the stroke of a pin, now these are considered unserved and can be overbuilt, which is a really sketchy sort of situation. And where folks are like, okay, uh, what do? <laughs> what do we do with this information? So. Yeah, it's really, it's, I mean, it's really the devil's in the details and it's really all. Uh, left, you know, to, to to really kind of define what these things mean, right? So we really have to see where it goes and how it, you know, hashes out. I know WISPA is, you know, uh, you know, chiming in and saying they're going to do everything that they can to send out notices and and get clarification. I guess is the best word for for what all these terms mean: underserved, what's licensed, what's unlicensed. Because there's even something in there that says that if <clears throat> I forgot the exact wording, but it's something like if uh, the area is supported by license, then it's okay, right? Which some people are interpreting as, well, if I have licensed backhauls coming into my tower, then that's 
considered supported by license and therefore the unlicensed distribution of point to multipoint from there would be okay, right? So these are all the things that really uh, need to be figured out and uh, really needs to be clarified for the WISP industry. Yeah, there's so much of it. And now the lawyers are really digging in and, you know, of course, getting paid, obviously, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. that's always a part of these funding projects. So for, you know, at first glance, it was a little doom and gloom, but, uh, you know, after people started digesting the info and talking it out, you know, it's, it's definitely like, it's not awesome, right? Cause government money paying to overbuild an area where you are, it's never a great thing, clearly, but there's a lot of things to consider. One, this is a big bloated government project and everybody's got their hands out. So, you know, the first thing, 40 some odd billion dollars sounds like a lot of money. I mean, it is right. Right. Uh, less, less day by day lately, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, okay. So now this is going to be spread across 50 States and a handful of territories. So that spreads it thin. You know, there's a lot of money that goes into the States. Like the States are administering their own areas, right? Some yeah. are going to go deep into this and be a lot more effective. Some of them are not, you know, just because they don't have the man's power resources, Ability, you know, I think what was it, thirty-four states, I think, had broadband uh, offices, like official broadband offices, but that leaves the others that don't. So they've got to set this up. They've got to figure this out. So one, there's a lot of money, but it is being spread across a very wide area. Uh, the other thing, I mean, we're probably not going to see money hitting until what deep into late next year. Cause they've got to set up these broadband yeah. offices, their programs and everything. So, I mean, and with how things go, especially with the government, I mean, it's probably going to be 24 before things start moving and it's kind of a phased approach too. So, uh, there's that. There's, um, you know, the big fear is it's going to be fiber. All these fiber providers are going to pop up from nowhere and overbuild, but fiber is still incredibly expensive and it really is incredibly slow to deploy. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's also like, it's not mandated. Like these companies are picking geographic areas that are going to cover. And I think it, to cover an area, I think it has to like 80% of the addresses in the area have to be considered unserved or if they're served, but underserved, then they can apply for the second round. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of areas where these fiber providers or even your, your bigger companies and stuff are going to be like, nah, there's just not enough people out there. So, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of places in this country with very sparse population density where wireless makes a really good fit. You know, you've got a five or six mile radius from your tower. You can cover a lot of ground from a single spot where if you're trying to fiber to the home, each one of those, that's a lot of, a lot of empty miles and stuff. So yeah, yeah. That's a big part. I mean, there's so many other things involved too. Uh, all the weird clauses and stuff like buy American. So buy yeah, American cool. programs. Good point. Yeah. Great. I mean, buy American. Yeah, we should definitely buy American stuff. But in the middle of a global supply chain crisis where like fiber now, I mean, a lot of fiber is six, eight, 12 months out. And now it's mandated. You've got to buy American fiber. You know, it's great for those folks, you know, making the stuff. But I mean, they're already a ways out. So now we've got all this uh, supply chain issues. And then is that buy American clause going to dictate down to the switch level? You know, is this the, the infrastructure yeah. that ties into it? Like there's a lot of that stuff's not defined as well. So. Yeah. There's also the, the uptime requirements as well. Right. So I, I don't know about the, the previous uh, funds that have gone out, but there's something like uh, you have to guarantee no more than 48 hours of outage per year. So I don't know how that breaks down. Is that overall in the network? Is that per sub and you know, how, how, you know, how all that's going to be calculated and even tracked, right? Is, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy to think on, you know, all the little fine points that they're, they're putting in there. Um, a lot of the money also has to go to hubs, you know, historically underserved businesses and stuff like that. Um, so there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of fine prints to really go through. And I don't, I don't think that, uh, that the actual bidding process and stuff really starts sometime in November or something like that. So we have time to kind of figure it out, I believe. And, and before the first, the first bids and contracts and whatever start, start going out, the paperwork has to be filed. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got to get the mapping done and like, they're like, Oh, we're going to have it done by November. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> no. <"Are you> okay, <laughs> sure, exactly. buddy. Sure. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's, you know, 
it's definitely just something to consider if you were doing an unlicensed WISP and you know, even if you've got a really good network and stuff, it's something that you've got to consider. But even if you do get overbilled in the next few years, I mean, you know, there's no guarantee that they're going to wipe you out. I know a lot of people that are competing with, you know, fiber networks on the daily basis. And, you know, as long as your speeds are good, I mean, all those 60 gig networks that are doing amazing capacity latencies and everything else, those are all unlicensed, right? So those are tremendously well-built and well-run networks, or they can be. So, you know, we, we know a lot of folks that are, are taking it to the fiber providers and, you know, you've got to focus on what got you there in the first place. You know, things like customer service, your local entity, you participate in the local communities. A lot of these things we've kind of either preached about independently or a lot of our other like WIS guests have talked about, you know, working at that local level, you know, and say, look, I'm a part of this community. And yeah, Spectrum could run, you know, those kind of commercials. Everyone's like, yeah, okay, buddy, whatever. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of these, you know, WISPs that are doing really well and are really integrated into the community. So it's not like they're going to get put out of business day one. So Yeah, and I think that's the other, the other thing, too, because really this this money that goes out is is really that uh you know that that uh, private public relationship right so you you have to you have to start talking to uh the people in your county and stuff like that or at the state level and uh you know help them because i mean a lot of these these you know government entities are are very uneducated when it comes to broadband right so they're really looking for somebody to guide them and you know somebody like spectrum or AT&T don't always have the capacity to go down to that you know granule of a level to start talking to all these you know local municipalities and stuff like that so i think that's really where we as wisps have the upper hand on them. I mean, a lot of us already have those relationships. A lot of those uh, government entities are already coming to us for advice and guidance. So, I mean, you know, if, if you have your foot in the door already, that's fantastic. If you haven't, get your foot in the door, you know, start talking to these people, start educating them, start showing them uh, the difference. And, you know, also, you know, the, you know, the, the fiber only approach is really the worst approach you can have because people need broadband now, right? And that's what whispering to the table. We've been providing it to underserved areas since inception. Uh, we continue doing it well. We know it very well. I mean, this is really all in our wheelhouse, right? So it's this hybrid approach of fiber and wireless is something that uh, we really have to focus on. And, and WISP, we've, we've mentioned it many times before. It's like, as a WISP, if you're not in fiber now, you should start looking into it i know there are you know funding issues and obviously there's there's dollars involved in in trying to do this but you know becoming familiar with it you know getting your feet wet even on small projects to just kind of you know learn how to deploy fiber is you know a, a good place to start so we really have to start looking at again that hybrid approach because i believe in the end that's really what's gonna what's gonna make all this happen and, and bring good connectivity to uh, these underserved or unserved regions of our country. For sure, for sure. You know, and there's there's a lot of money where I mean, you guys can be competing for this money as well, right? And then yeah. you know, it's it's a lot of potential out there for sure. So you know, again, it, it was it was really scary. You know, that, that weekend afterward, everyone was like, "What is going on?" But yeah. as folks yeah. started grinding through the a hundred pages, and that's just like the notice of funding. That's like, "Hey, here's what we're doing," and kind of some of the details, and it's it's pretty deep. So, uh, and this thing's not a hundred percent set in stone either. Like, there's definitely some some areas where there can be further discussion and redefine things and stuff like that. So, you know, any sort of big blanket project like this, that's on a four or five year plan, you know, is going to have to have some amount of variability or I guess flexibility to it, uh, just to deal with implementation in the real world. So, you know, a bunch of, bunch of Congress creators and stuff laying down the law, uh, and then, oh, this is how we're going to do stuff. And that plan lasts about the time that you start hanging the first thing and you're like, mm, maybe we need to pivot. Pivot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it's all, it's all about the pivot. Again, I think, uh, that's the thing, uh, again, we have to focus is, you know, we're here, we are now, and we can do it much quicker, uh, than they can with fiber. <clears throat> and, and quite frankly, you know, fiber doesn't always mean self-funded, you know, there are, uh, 
uh, lots of situations out there where developers and, and other people are, are willing to foot the bill, you know, to bring fiber into their community. And, and they've they've been dealing with, you know, the kind of incumbent people out there, the spectrums, the co-ops and other people that are out there that are just, you know, having a hard time, uh, you know, delivering on their promises and stuff like that. So, you know, again, uh, you have to be active. You have to be in the game, uh, and uh, you know you, you have to. You really have to go for it. You know, if you just sit around and you know cry and worry about like this is going to be the end, then yeah, I mean it probably will be for you. You know, but uh, get involved and and give it a go. You know, give it the old college try. <laughs> At least you know you have to. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of plays in a conversation we were having internally this morning. Is you know kind of keeping your eyes on the prize. So there's there's a lot of stuff like. There's a lot of scary things going on, you know, uh, I mean, just with the economy and the inflation and the, the recession that we've been waiting on for like three or five years now, let's come and bubble this, bubble that, whatever. So, you know, there's that aspect of things. There's this bead stuff coming out, you know, on the scary side, but then there's also a lot of really cool stuff. Everyone's like, yeah, six gig. Great. Uh, 11 X stuff, which is great. You know, next generation platforms. All right. This is awesome. But you know, it's good to have your eyes uh, f- looking towards the future, obviously, but you can't do that without not focusing on the now as well, right? Or keeping your eyes on the prize because, you know, it's one thing to go, all right, we're not going to do any new deployments until 6K comes out. But what if it ends up being, you know, earliest is Q1 in the next year, it kind of seems to be the general consistency, but government things, right? So this could, I mean, this could easily roll on to the next year. Uh, maybe they're like, well, we could play into this and tie this into the bead thing or whatever else. Um, yeah, you know, there could be an administration change that happens and then that throws a lot of wrenches into this. So, you know, it, it's good to have plans for the future, but you get really got to think about now, like what can I deploy now? Where are areas that can grow now? Um, the tech is available. The tech is mature. Um, you know, there's a lot of places for new growth, right? And a lot of people are waiting to greenfield new networks, you know, waiting on six gig or waiting on full AX and stuff like that. But you can be building these networks now, making money now. We've talked about that in the past is, you know, there's a lot to be done now that will make money for you now. Cause I mean, that's yeah. in the end, that's what we're trying to do is make some money. So, you know all the promises of backwards compatibility and rollover, that's going to take a while. So, you know, you need to focus on what you can do now. Um, if you're struggling with equipment, like a lot of people are, you know, and you can't build out new, you know, look at improving what you've got, you know, uh, so much of our, uh, growth and success has been tied into people that have said, look, I've got these networks on sectors, They work okay, but they've gotten noisy. They've gotten busy. It's kind of tough. And they swap them out, put horns up, and now all of a sudden their performance is way higher. Modulations are higher. All these things that we are constantly preaching about is because this is where it's come from. It's it's real, right? So, you know, if you've got... Uh, if you're in a situation where you're, you can't really build out a lot of new networks or you're worried about footprint and stuff, lots of potential to increase the performance of what you've got generation, upgrade something, uh, split congested sectors into smaller horn slices with radios. I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you can improve the performance. And if you've got questions about how to do that, you know, we've got a ton of resources out there that explain these sort of things. Um, yeah. I like our YouTube channel. I mean, you know, you're always telling people toss this me too, you know, the resources on the YouTube channel that are learning about how to, to implement and use. Right. So, I mean, there's uh, let's see, Wist Traveler, you know, Wist Traveler is a, a good video series that we've done a lot of work with that says these, these are real people in the real world, how they've been used on our stuff to increase the performance. Um, we've got things like the inside wireless series, uh, where we teach a lot about the basic fundamentals and get people educated about how to do stuff. Uh, webinars, we've got piles and piles of webinars, uh, that we've got posted. In different languages too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're multilingual. So, yeah, yeah. um, like the migration to horns, you know, that's a really popular one. I think that's where, uh, a lot of people get a real, a lot of really good, useful information on how to move from sectors to horns and, you know, a really good way of looking at it, uh, from what you've got currently to dabbling and 
figure out how it works. You learn really quickly what it takes to get it done. Then you can roll on with the rest of the network, improving the performance, making yourself more competitive. You know, I think that's a big, a big point too, is when we're talking about overbuilding or we're talking about the competition and getting stuff tighter, you know, you can't just kind of sit on your heels and just let this go. So what was, you know, competition, you know, from satellite is now, you know, Starlink's coming, right? And, you know, it's definitely got his own problems, but it's it's a thing. Like everyone needs to consider. Maybe fiber yeah. overbuilds, maybe, you know, government funded license with or the the big FWA, the fixed wireless pushes from your, you know, Verizon and T Mobile and stuff. Like all these things are out there. And if you kind of sit on a network that's old and kind of antiquated, you know, the, the days of I'm, I'm doing five megs down one meg up or <laughs> probably somewhat limited in the, 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 the near future. Yeah. That's a, that's a really, really good point. I mean, you know, if we, like, I understand everybody wanting the latest and greatest and wanting to move to six gig. I mean, you know, the, there's two parts really to the six gig. There's the, AX part of it increased performance, but I think it's really about the spectrum that's available. That's really where, you know, people are kind of, you know, pigeon toed into or, or, or thinking about or why they want it so bad. But, I and mean, if we look at the, again, just go back to the basics of the requirements for what's served, underserved, and so on and so forth. I mean, 100 by 20, we've been doing that for a couple of years now. I mean, WISP have been doing it with the current equipment set that we have now that's baked and ready. You know, I see a lot of WISPs out there still, you know, time to time deploying omnis right well it's low density we don't have the money i mean there's still people going out and deploying the cheapest possible hardware they can find like these lap ap's and you know and all these other things and and what have you so there is much better equipment now it's not you know, it's not, you know, you know, multiples of cost to go to, uh, you know, a hardware platform that's more stable, more reliable and capable of delivering and, and working within the requirements that are out there now. So, yeah, you know, you know, six gig is fantastic. AX is going to be great when that time comes. Um, but, you know, if you're sitting on a legacy network, now is the time. Now is the time to take down those wide sectors and, and break them into more narrow horns uh to go from these kind of really cheap integrated you know sector radios all in one thing uh to go to a more reliable you know uh radio with uh horns or something like that in order to build this capacity to get that aggregate throughput and customer density at your towers to to serve the customers you have now and in the future, I mean, and this is the other thing, like I, I hear a lot of the, you know, pushback, you know, in the cities and stuff like that. It's like you said, the T-Mobiles are coming out with $30 a month, $25 a month, unlimited, no caps, all this other stuff. It's like, well, you know, why fight that fight right now? It's like, you know, this is about getting connectivity to rural America. If you're in there fighting, you know, you know, with other providers, you're not really doing the service that the WISP industry is supposed to be doing. And that's focused on the people who don't have internet, you know, get out to those rural areas, do those builds and uh, start serving those companies. Make sure you're filling out your, you know, form 477s and letting people know we are here, <laughs> you know, um, all, all these things are really important and they're not, they're not hugely capital intensive and they're, they're not very difficult to do to keep yourself relevant and, and in this fight really. Yep, yep. Like I said, eyes on the prize and, and don't be waiting for the great next thing tomorrow. Like, focus on what you can do now uh, and just get ready. You know, just get ready for what's happening. And I mean, and there's always going to be competition. There's going to be technology growth. And I mean, there there always has been, right? I think this is just lately, a lot of the stuff that's been out there is really putting a, a bead on the nose for folks. So, yeah. eyes on the prize, get stuff done. Uh, you know, if you're curious about using our horns and stuff, like I said, we got a ton of resources, our YouTube channel, our website. Uh, we've got so much stuff on our website, the link calculator, you know, we haven't had a good link calculator pump in a little bit. So <laughs> use the link calculator. Um, but just all the, just all the useful information out there. If you've got any questions, you know, please reach out to us for sure. And, uh, we can help you, you know, if you're, if you're horn curious, we're there to <laughs> help answer your questions. So, <laughs> Definitely. but, um, yeah, I think it's a good summary of kind of what we've been doing. Um, what, you know, the big news items and stuff now, uh, and just kind of keep everyone recentered and refocused. So, 
Guys, um, you know, if you've got any questions, please reach out. Toss us. Where can they find us? Uh, oh, we forgot our call to action. Oh, we're bad I podcast know, people. Oh, oh, no. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget to like, listen, or subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube or anywhere you download your audio podcast like Apple, Spotify, or Google. We're just trained monkeys, and if we do something slightly different than normal, we just completely lose the plot. <laughs> so, and then where all yeah. can they find us again? Yeah, you can find us everywhere on social media, specifically on the WISP groups on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, you could always find uh, good information on our website, rfelements.com, uh, on our forum for more technical stuff, rfelab.com. And again, really, really great information, not just about us, but uh, about other WISPs on our YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com slash RF elements. Check out all the information. We've spent a lot of time and resources uh, putting this information out there to help you grow your WISP uh, the easiest way uh, by learning from other people's mistakes and figuring out how to overcome a lot of the challenges you may be having. It's probably been solved and it's probably documented uh, somewhere on our YouTube channel. So definitely check that stuff out. Okay. Any more closing words or you think it's good? No, I mean, honestly, you know, uh, as uh, you know, whenever it seems like things are negative, there's always so many positive things to be looking at, right? So, I mean, you know, somebody actually, you know, somebody actually used a, a pretty good uh, phrase the other day. We were talking about some of doom and gloom stuff and, you know, what's happening and stuff. And I said, you know, you always have to, you always have to look forward, you know, stop looking back at that stuff. He's like, you know, even when, you, when you're flying an airplane, you still have to, you still have to scan for traffic, right? So yes, you have to be aware of what's happening around you. Uh, you, you need to know the things that are coming, uh, of course, the things that, you know, could hurt you, right? So it's really important to be abreast of that, but, but don't hyper-focus on it is, is the key. Hyper-focus on what you do, what you do really well and, and continue doing that. hundred percent, man. hundred percent eyes on the prize. So, yep. well, until next time, folks, uh, y'all be good. Bye. Be good now. See ya. <laughs>